In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. So, my friends, we gather on this, the fifth Sunday of Lent, as we continue our Lenten journey together. We come always with so much in our heart and on our minds to share with the Lord and to pray for. We bring in a special way the mom of our own Kim Fina, here from Holy Ghost Prep, her mom Sarah Ann uh, Freiling, who is called home to heaven to rejoice in the resurrection and to live the fullness of life of peace and joy and goodness with the Lord and all the saints who have gone on before her. So we pray in a very special way for Kim, for all of uh, Sarah Ann's family and friends who mourn her passing and yet rejoice in her entrance to new, to new and full life with the Lord. We bring all of our prayers, knowing that these crazy days are often trying and confusing, and we need to listen, to listen to the Lord, not only with our ears, but with our heart. And to realize that often listening to the Lord means listening also to one another and taking the time to listen to what's going inside ourselves. And so we begin by asking the Lord pardon for the difficulty we have in listening. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. And let us pray. By your help we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Our first reading is taken from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers the day I took them by the hand to lead them forth from the land of Egypt. For they broke my covenant, and I had to show myself their master, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. No longer will they have need to teach their friends and relatives how to know the Lord. All from the least to the greatest shall know me, says the Lord. For I will forgive their evil doing and I will remember their sin no more. The Word of the Lord. Have mercy on me, God. In your goodness, create a clean heart in me. Have mercy on me, O God. In your goodness, create a clean heart in me. A clean heart create for me, O God, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness. Create a clean heart in me, O God. Give me back the joy of your salvation, and a willing spirit in me. I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners shall return to you. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness. Create a clean heart in me. Our second reading is taken from the letter to the Hebrews. 
In the days when Christ Jesus was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The Word of the Lord. Whoever serves me must follow me, says the Lord, and where I am, there also will my servant be. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Some Greeks who had come to worship at the Passover feast came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and they asked him, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, and then Andrew and Philip went and they told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces great fruit. Whoever loved their loves their life loses it, and whoever hates their life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. I am troubled now, yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowds there heard it, but they said it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, This voice did not come for my sake, but rather for yours. Now is the time of judgment on this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said this, indicating the kind of death that he would die. My friends, the Gospel of the Lord. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel. I will place my law in them and write it on their hearts. I will be their God, and they will be my people. All from the least to the greatest shall know me, and I will remember their sin no more. And so thus the prophet Jeremiah assures his people that their infidelity has not led God to abandon them, but rather to reform them. To reform in the truest sense of that word, to reform, to reshape, to put in the right order. So instead of giving us more rules to follow, God rather wants to infuse within their hearts the fire of divine love. This is not a new covenant but rather an offer of grace to understand God's will anew from the inside out. When the covenant is scripted on their hearts, they will share the very passion of God, the very love and presence of God. 
share the very passion of God. Well, that may sound like such a wonderful thing. We also know that it is quite costly and quite challenging. In this crazy world today, how do we share the passion of God? When the world calls, calls us to be number one, to be rich, to be powerful, to dominate, to be the center of attraction, to get more and want more. How do we live with the passion of God? And that's the point of the reading from the letter to the Hebrews. There we've just heard that Jesus, the Son of God, had to struggle himself to live that vocation. And the struggle wasn't just a passing moment. The letter makes it quite clear. Jesus prayed with shouts and tears. And if we read our Bibles well, we remember those times and passages. The author of the letter to the Hebrews says that Jesus learned obedience through suffering. Does that mean that the Son of God didn't know how to obey, that he had to learn it? No. It means that the Son of God was fully human in his obedience. Like that of every other person, he realized that obedience must be incarnated, lived out in our own personal history, our own lives. And of course, the beautiful thing about that is that it underlines the intimate relationship we have with God. We're not just some, you know, mass grouping that somehow the Lord just deals with the people in some anonymous, generic sense that God calls each one of us by name and each one of us listens and obeys in our own unique life with our own unique gifts and talents, our struggles and our joys, all that we know and all that confuses us, all the good we have to be proud of and all the shameful things we know we've done. Don't forget that obedience comes from the Latin words ab odire, meaning to listen. You probably don't think a lot that obedience means to listen. And Jesus didn't just listen passively. And we know that can be done. Believe me, as a teacher, there's nothing more frustrating when, than when you feel that your students are listening passively, meaning they're just kind of hearing what you're saying, maybe jot in the notebook, and at most, they might just repeat it to you. And ask any of my poor students who suffer through a year with me, how that drives me crazy. I always say to them, but where are you with this? You're just repeating what the book said. You're repeating what I said. You're repeating what a video said. How is this affecting your life? What do you see and what do you agree with and why? And what does it call you to do? What gifts in you, in your family, in, in your sport, in your leisure activities with your friends? And that it is when the Lord guides us and tells us we must obey who we are and where we are and how we are, touching lives so differently than one another because we're all so unique and that love of God is so personal for each one of us. So it's quite the opposite of being passive. Jesus listened with a passion, with a passion, putting into his life putting all that the Father asked of him into his life, into his words, into his actions, into his heart. And we're called to do the same, to be listeners passionately and to respond with our words, with our hearts, with our lives, with our actions, with our love. And this leads directly to our gospel scene where Jesus teaches his apostles <clears throat> about growth in obedience and how listening with his heart led him to fulfill God's will. He explains that his moment of glory is about to arrive and doesn't hesitate to say that he knows what it will cost. He then teaches his disciples what it means to hate the life that the world offers, of power and riches and things. This Sunday, Jesus invites us to dare obedience, to imitate that passion for God, 
That's love and intimacy with God and each other. To be the fullness of who we are. Knit in our mother's womb by the Lord. Jeremiah speaks of God writing the covenant on our hearts. We look so often outside ourselves, but God is written in our hearts, each one of us. But that happens only to the extent that we allow it. Because love is free. And we must accept that love of God and realize that we are so loved, not because we are so worthy, but because God is so amazing and wonderful. Jesus demonstrates that obedience is an ever-growing choice to listen to God, to hear and to allow ourselves to be formed and reformed, like that other beautiful image found so often in Scripture of the clay and the potter. And we are the clay, and God is the potter, forming us and reforming us to perfection. Jesus shows us that living with this type of passion will not rule out loud cries or tears or emotional disputes of God with God in the style of the prophets, in the style of Jesus himself. You know, the dark moments that we've seen these last months shouldn't be glossed over with happy talk only about the good things that have happened, even though, yes, I'm the first to say so many unexpected blessings and insights and even joys have appeared in the midst of all this darkness and difficulty. But that is never to downplay the darkness and difficulty and challenges weighing so many people down this last year. The hope of Easter is weightless without the sorrow of the cross. But rebirth is real. Mercy is here. And hope is always justified. We have a new awareness of the whole systematic racism around us, and then so many of us have begun to work even harder and harder and with more passion and more eagerness to eradicate that, to build bridges, to make unity, to let the kingdom of God flourish here on earth as we strive to live as one family. From political violence that we've seen in cities and countries all around the world, including our own in so many totally unexpected and unimaginable ways, has come a great renewed commitment for civic engagement, for doing the right thing, for being the best we can and helping others to be the best they can. And from this hor horrible pandemic has come a new appreciation for the gift of gathering together in home, in backyards, in churches, in theaters, We've even learned to appreciate to such a greater extent teaching, both as students and both as educators and staff. But even me, I've seen that right here at Holy Ghost Prep. Most of all, we've learned in such a greater way, we've come to appreciate the need to love and to be loved. We've understood it to a greater depth than perhaps we ever have before how interconnected we all are and how much we want to be, and how much we need to be. And it's funny when we just recently in my own class went over Genesis, how that is so clearly from creation, from God's original plan, that we live together and need each other and grow each other, grow with each other and become the best of ourselves. You know, we've lived through the longest Lent of our lives. I think most of us would agree with that. We just keep talking about the 12 month anniversary of mortifying ups isolation and constant reminders that we are dust and to dust will return. It's been a long Lent, a bit of a tiring, frustrating, and for so many, extremely painful. But now springtime is here. Easter is here. It's coming, and yet it's here. All who have suffered and grieved with one another, we who've cried out with one another, prayed with one another, complained with one another, and tried to 
push each other a bit forward, are now called to the newness of life together as a people of hope, of obedience, and being reformed to love and to be loved because we're not giving rules to be followed, but rather something written in our heart to love and to be loved. Obedience in the style of Jesus is not passive submission. It's a passionate, loving, active, joyful, expectant, listening to the Father and listening to each other that leads us finally to become more than we would choose, more than we could ever have imagined that we can be. It leads us to be exactly who we truly are, who we were born to be, the image and likeness of God. We will rise because Jesus did, and Jesus calls us forth. And so now, my friends, with faith and trust in the living God who writes his words on our heart, if we listen, let us call to mind all of our needs and our petitions and trust in God's mercy. As always, we pray for the sick. We pray for all those suffering from COVID, for all of the health caregivers, for those who have passed away from COVID, the families that grieve. We continue to pray for the successful and quick uh, rolling out of the vaccine, that this will all uh, be done equitably and rightly, blessing the people who are giving so much time and effort and energy to making sure that it is done uh, in the best way possible. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Sarah Ann Freiling, the mom of Kim Fina, that the Lord will welcome her into the joy and peace of heaven and time to celebrate Easter, the great resurrection of the Lord, now that she has gone to be with the Lord. So for Sarah Ann, who has gone home to heaven, and for Kim, who mourns her, and for all her family and friends, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all of the students throughout the world. In a special way, of course, we pray for our Holy Ghost prep students we, and for faculty and staff. We pray in Thanksgiving for the wonderful visit that we were blessed with uh, Wednesday, this past Wednesday, by the Archbishop of Philadelphia, uh, Archbishop Nelson Perez, in Thanksgiving for his presence and his love, his joy and his spirit. We give you thanks, Lord, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And what else should we pray for, my friends? Great and living God, we lift to you all of our prayers and our petitions. We ask you to grant them as you know best for us, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands who will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me of all my sins. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the loving Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. 
Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them through the workings of this sacrifice. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that free from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world, so as rather to hold to the things that eternally endure. And so with the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, with Nelson our Bishop, and with all the clergy. Remember Sarah Ann, and remember all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed St. Joseph, her beloved spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. 
Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but rather on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other then a sign of God's peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And let us take a few moments to give thanks to the Lord for the blessings of this past week. And let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Bless, O Lord, your people who long for the gift of your mercy, and grant that what that your prompting they desire, they may receive by your generous love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us go to love and serve the Lord by our lives. <laughs>